My guest, Ken Fisher, manages $35 billion as the founder and chairman of Fisher Investments. He's focused on some ways to profit in the stock market, perhaps from a cyclical recovery. Uh, Ken Fisher, talk a little bit, if you can, about Dow Chemical and also Lubrizol. I mean, two U.S.-based firms that you think are going to do very well. Well, going back to points that I was making in the last segment, the categories that typically lead early in a bull market are those that did as well or better than the market in the first half of a bear market but got killed in the back half, and that includes materials, which as a subset is chemicals. So when you think of Dow Chemical, in some ways, it is a pure quality play in this regard. It's the second largest chemical company in the world. In the last economic expansion, it moved from being the third largest chemical company in the world to the second. I believe before this cycle's over, it will become the largest overtaking BSAF. And it has this great ability to understand that in the long term, Everything in chemicals is about keeping costs down and gaining market share. It's just the, the master at that. So I see this stock, which has basically over the course of the last year uh, taken a move from kind of 15 to 30 and see it over the course of the next year going up again by 50 percent instead of doubling going up by 50 percent. But that's nice. We're still in this period where materials lead. It's just the dominant critter. Lubrizol, on the other hand, is specialty, heavily oriented toward uh, fluids that are used as specialty chemicals with equipment in a variety of forms, heavily oriented toward the refining industry, which right now at these prices is doing pretty well. And I'm looking at a world where from very reasonable valuations you get 20 percent year-over-year growth for a number of years and probably before this cycle's over the company actually gets acquired by someone it's a prime intermediate-term acquisition target uh, ken fisher when you take a look at companies such as dow chemical and then lubrizol how do you do a valuation analysis on them i mean are you just looking at what they're earning because you're talking also about things like market share and a much bigger macroeconomic picture when it comes to what happens let's say with dow chemical all over the world an easy way to do it with something like dow which is you know big and broad spread is to just go back and look at the kinds of typical margins they've been able to achieve in past cycles and then extrapolate that onto what you'd expect for revenue a year or two out. When, when I look at that, I see Dow, which of course got its earnings killed completely and eliminated by the recession, being something that's a mid-single-digit P.E. in 2011 and um, maybe 10 times earnings in 2010. Uh, it's just a matter of taking normal, reasonable profit margins and extrapolating them on what future revenue should be. And do you do the same kind of thing when you look at a valuation for, let's say, let's talk about uh, Vivo. This is a Brazilian telecom, mobile telecom giant. Is that the same kind of valuation process, or is this more of a growth story, and then you use something else? It is more of a growth story. V Vivo is a third of the Brazilian uh, cellular phone market, 45 million subscribers currently, but it's rapidly pushing itself to expand. And one of the parts that I don't think many people have thought through is that it's got the potential to expand in Hispanic America outside of Brazil. And it's basically your pure growth story. But let's just step back from that for a moment because I believe when you actually look out at that same growth story, it's still 10 times some 2011 earnings. It's not a growth story with high valuations. That same principle applies. It's simply a play on the fact that the Brazil market is growing rapidly with a growing internal middle class demand, and that cell phone growth is huge and real, and this company is exceptionally well postured to not only pick that up in Brazil, where they're the largest player, but actually to expand outside of Brazil. Is, uh, is there also a growth story when you come to looking at digital displays? Let's talk about the South Korean company symbol LPL. This is uh, LG Display. Uh, is that also the bet on growth of digital display all over the world and also margin control? Let's say that differently. The answer is sort of yes and sort of something else at the same time. On the one hand, the fact is that 
this is mostly going into consumer items, which means while it's an industrial, it's feeding the world of consumer discretionary. And one of the other categories that I expect to be doing well besides materials is both consumer discretionary and industrial. So it's both of those at once. And it's that portion, that 30 plus percent portion of global GDP that's emerging markets where emerging middle class growth funds the purchase of consumer discretionary where it's exactly there that people are going to want to pick up displays and particularly high end displays because for the first time in their lives they can afford them. So it's both a growth story in terms of that same function, but it's also simply at the same time a basic in developed markets play on consumer discretionary, which is a place or the place to be. Consumer discretionary stocks overall have been very hot. And while LPL is not actually a consumer discretionary, that's what it feeds right into. It feeds into the strength of that. All right. So getting the benefit of, uh, of both. I want to thank you very much, uh, Ken Fisher, coming to us from Fisher Investments, talking about Dow Chemical, Lubrizol, as well as Vivo and LG Display.